Um, but we'll start with the frame. Um, so usually for the frame, let me tilt this up. You know, for like the in-betweens here and whatnot, I'll try to take my reciprocating sander here and I'll put it on the lowest setting just so it doesn't melt the plastic. And then I'll sand that little lump up top here just to get the little layer lines out. And I'll usually use this on all the, the big areas just to get the bulk of the layer lines out. Um, I'll use regular 3M spot, a red spot putty. And uh, I've seen a lot of people do it in different ways. You can either cover the whole frame with it or just cover up the biggest spots is what, what I do. And I use um, this stuff here. Make sure it's sandable. There's a difference between the filler primer that doesn't say it's sandable and the one that is. This one sands a lot better. So I usually use this one. Um, but a few coats of that, you know, put on a coat, let it dry real well. And uh, you'll know when it's really cured because when you sand it, if it's not fully cured, um, it'll gum up on the sandpaper. So if it does do that, uh, let it dry a little bit longer before you start sanding it. It should come off as a fine powder and not gum up at all. Um, but that this will fill in a lot of these layer lines and make it really smooth. So I usually go over the whole frame. I, I go over the plates. Um, I go over the little strap helpers. These aren't too bad. Usually a good sanding and some filler primer will make those look nice and smooth. Uh, the little D-ring, I'll go over the edges and sand the top there. You know, don't worry about the bottoms that are going to mount. <clears throat> and when you get all the major sanding done, <clears throat> so you get your lenses here. And you'll have the tall one, which goes with the tall lens. And I usually will do some light sanding with 400 grit around this edge, just so that it fits nice and snug into here. Actually, I think it's this one. No, that's a long one. Yep. This is the short one. And then the short one will fit into here. This one fits in pretty good, but I think that one has a little bit of a lip, so you'll have to sand it a little bit. So that one goes in there. This one goes in here. So short lens with a short lens, long lens with a long lens. You got these two little discs. These, um, if you wet sand them with like 800 grit and polish them, you can make them really, really clear. Uh, this is just how they come out when you first print them. They're kind of opaque and it's part of the curing process, but you can make them really clear if you polish them. So that's up to you. Uh, some people don't even put them in. But um, choice is yours. You'll have to sand the edges again until it fits nice and snug. And I would always give it a little bit more of a leeway because after you paint this, you know, if there's a layer of paint that's going to add, you know, another layer that's going to make it a little bit harder to push them in. So, you know, make sure they're, they're loose, but not that they're going to fall out. Uh, you got your battery cover that goes here and you got your power knob that goes here. And what I usually do with these knobs and then the side knobs that go up here, I usually take some socket head screws and I tap them into here and then I cut the heads off the screws and then that turns the knob into a screw itself and then you can just kind of thread it right into there and just keep a clearance because there's only a little bit of clearance for it to go in there. So make sure the screw head is, you know, kind of short. And I'll do that for these, these two. These, you got a little bit more leeway because you can get to the inside of the frame here. You could just put a screw in there, a short one. Uh, sometimes I'll just buy socket heads and cut off the excess. And then that way you can kind of thread it right in there. And I usually, me, I use a tap and I'll just tap into it to give the threads it needs. And that way you could screw it on. You could take it off if need be. Um, the button snaps. Uh, if you use real ones or these fake ones, you can either glue them on or do like me. I, I try not to glue as much as possible, but I'll drill just a little hole and use a little 440 socket head screw in the middle of this. Put it on and then put a little nut on the inside or just thread it into the plastic. That way you can take them off if need be, you know. Um, the actual set, I believe, has one here, here here but it's missing one over here there's actually only three but if you want all four you can put all four i include five 
Um, the little standoffs again, you know, you want to make sure you sand the little edges here so you can fit them in here. And usually they stand out a little bit, you know. The D-ring holder will go right up here. I made the hole small so you can drill it out to whatever screw size you want. So that's going to go here like this and hold the top strap on. These plates, I uh, usually use 830, 832 uh, socket head screws in the four corners here. So you got this plate that has the little edge here. These fit this like this. So they fit them nice and snug like this. And then what you do is you put this one sandwiched on top of them like this. See? That way it sandwiches them together with the four screws and holds it together as one piece. And then all you have to do is press fit this into the frame and it'll sit on these little ledges here. So make sure you sand that real well and kind of test fit everything before you, you paint. But when you're done, you know, just push it right together. And then if need be, if your lens breaks or something like that, you can always press fit this out, take the screws out and fix the lens or get a replacement lens as a pair, you know, as opposed to gluing it all together. And if something breaks, you know, it's harder to fix. And then here, this goes behind your head. And here's a one inch nylon webbing strap that you can get at most craft stores. This is what I use. You can put this in here like this and then put it over the edge. So this is behind your head so that it's like this. That way it holds. And there's little teeth in there that hold the edge of the strap. But not only does it have those teeth, but you have these as well. And these go through like this. To hold the excess of the strap. So that way you can loop this into here. Like this. Make sure too to use a lighter on the ends of your straps here so they don't fray like this. But I know this is a miniature version, but. So again, you know, here's the back of the strap, the back of your head. This end is gonna be attached with a button snap that you'll have to make an additional hole in the side of the frame here to attach here. So you'll have the aesthetic button snaps on the side here, but you'll need a third one here to attach the straps. You can snap that on. And I'll send you a link, but this is the, these are the ones I use. And it's got the male and the female ends and the little tool to bang them together with a hammer. But here's one end of it that goes on the outside. And then he, here's the female end that goes on the inside. And then once these are banged together, it kind of flanges out like a rivet. And then that is gonna be what snaps onto your frame on the outside, and that's what I do. And then for the, uh, the male half, so it's gonna go about right there in the middle. And normally you would use this piece here on the inside but just because there's not a whole lot of it that comes out and I don't wanna to bang together the plastic, usually what I do is, again, I use another 440 screw and I put it through the top of this. And if you use a button head 440 screw, it'll sit low enough in the uh, male half of it here that you can still use the female half to snap on top of it. So it's up to you how you wanna attach this here. So those are for the side straps. The top strap will go over next, but you wanna make sure your D-ring's on there. And it's gonna flip into the D-ring. Like this, in the D-ring. And I'll show you how to attach that next. For this top strap, I'll send you a link, but these are double-headed uh, button snaps. So this is like a little female and a male end, and they go through the strap, and then you put this on top of the head, and you bang them together with a hammer, you know, kind of like a rivet. So I put these two pieces through here. So you'll have one, two, two of them 
And that's what the regular ecto goggles use. That way you have two button snaps that are showing on the outside. And that's what holds the strap on. So you got that top strap on there. You got the side straps all connected together with this on the back and you'll have a trifold at the top too. So you can adjust it and keep it clean looking on the back of your head. Uh, what else can I think of? So we went over the lenses and those. Um, again, you can use uh, to paint these a paint pen, which is probably the easiest, but I just use a fine tip paintbrush. I spray a little black paint in a little container and I just paint them myself, but you know, get your artistic capabilities out. <laughs> and I just go around the edge of it and I work my way into the button snap. And if you go slow enough, you can paint it without getting it onto the green. Um, speaking of the green, this is the this is Ecto Goggle Green. It's by Timera Color, and it's a TS28 Olive Drab 2. This is what they use, and it'll give you the perfect Ecto Goggle Green. So between the filler primer on here and then this stuff, you'll get it looking nice and swab. Um, again, I use the filler primer on the frame, and I just use regular primer on the lenses since they don't need to be sanded, really. I would do a light sanding on them, just with like a 400 grit, if there's any little imperfections, which there isn't much. You know, just give them a little go over. Another thing too is, you know, you may have to drill out these little holes a little bit for the standoffs, especially this one, it's not very, sunken in but the placer for the holes there so drill that out a little bit and find a drill bit that matches um if you need ever need any more of these let me know i'll hook you up because sometimes these break if you drop them which happens you know people drop their lenses so be careful with them um again here's the fastener kit with the little tools in there there's little instructions to show you how to bang them together uh, this is another kit too with the smaller snaps with the top strap and it comes with a little bag of them and a little tool here. And I just sandwich them together like this and hit the top. So it rivets them together. And the snaps here, these are the, the real snaps for the sides and the ones you'll need for the side straps if you want to go that route. And this is the internal piece for it. But again, being that it's a thick frame, I usually use a button head 440 screw to hold this onto the frame. That way you don't have to glue it and it's a much secure fit. And when you're pulling the strap off, if you ever want to de-snap it, you don't have to worry about ripping the snap off, you know, because it's bolted through the frame. Always the best way to go. Um, and then these here for the actual straps, this goes on the outside, this goes on the inside and snaps onto this on the side of the frame to hold those side uh, straps on. Top strap is those little buttons here. Again, here's how to do this with the trifolds for all three straps in the back of your head. And that'll hold it nice between the teeth on here and this holding that down, it'll be a nice secure fit. Um, you know, use uh, socket head screws, probably 832s I would suggest for everything to hold uh, these two on, these two on, and through the frame here, one, two, three, four. So you'll need four, five, six, seven, at least eight, 832 uh, socket heads. I'll send you a link too, but uh, for the inside padding, I mean, it's up to you. You can find the real, the real stuff out there on eBay, uh, which is more pricely, or you can get sticky back foam sheets and I'll send you a link for that. Uh, but what I do is I just kind of make a basic stencil of this outside area, and it, it doesn't do the nose piece. It kind of stops here, so it goes here, along the edge, here, and then comes back around. Make a stencil, trace that on to the foam sheet, and then just peel off the, cut it out, peel off the back, and stick it right on. That way you'll have a nice foam piece here. Plus two, if you put um, the button snaps on through here with a little nut, it'll help pad that so that nut's not against your cranium, you know? Um, and uh, as for electronics, I haven't seen much out there for electronics right now. There has been kits in the past. 
Um, usually people just kind of put lights in the lenses. And I've seen uh, a guy by the name of Mike Nelson with Carnivorous Creations in the past. He put a light kit with a bar graph and some other cool electronics. Uh, uh, Jupiter Electronics, uh, which is jupiterstore.com. They might have something. I know they've had stuff in the past, I believe. I don't know if they have anything currently. Um, but yeah, that's about it. If you have any other questions, let me know. I'm here to help. Um, I'll send some links for these, uh, these, and the uh, the sheets of um, foam. And again, these are just one inch nylon webbing strapping that you can get at any craft store. Uh, you'd probably be able to save a lot of money by getting it off Amazon. You could get like a big roll of it for way cheaper than like Joanne Fabric or Hobby Lobby, which will sell it much more expensive than that. And uh, lastly, again, with these lenses, if you want to polish them up, you can use uh, 800 grit uh, and, and wet them to do a wet sanding. And that's about it. Um, decals, uh, there's a few sellers on Etsy that have the decals for them, and I can send you a link to that as well.